Morning. Welcome back for yet another episode. Uh, what's going on today? We are going to wrap up the rear arches. Well, I've wrapped them up, but I'm going to show you how they've uh, turned out. And then we are going to be getting on with chopping out the old single circular rear lights in preparation for fitting the twin small spotlights to the back end. So it's going to be a good episode. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Lots of figuring out on the way, um, which is always interesting to see if things do pan out as they should do. Um, yeah, as always, let's get on with it. So I got my compressor back up and running. Um, so I was able to go over the P38 with a 40 grit sandpaper. Then following that, just a thin skim of filler over the join between the rear clamp and the new arches and yeah, just work that into shape. I still need to trim the rear line of the lower sill just so that flows into the arch line as nice as I would like it uh, shortly. And all of the inner arch gaps or the inner arch junctions have been fettled and tweaked so everything does flow through between the rear clamp and the new arches. As I, as I want to have them. So all in all, everything has just worked out really, really nicely. Now that's out of the way, I'm now ready to jump onto the next section of work, the next project, which you all know what it is. So work on removing the rear lights has actually begun and it's starting to come together quicker than I thought. Let me get you caught up to speed on what's happened so far. So jumping straight down to the back of the car, you'll see on the driver's side that I've re just removed the rear light at the moment. Coming over to the passenger side, you'll um, see that I've overlaid some cardboard over the hole of the existing rear light that I've cut out in its entirety. So I've cut the bucket out and I've also chamfered down the fiberglass so it runs in nice and smoothly to the cardboard. So when I lay up my fiberglass, it will lay nice and flat and give me the profile of the um, outside face really nicely. I've used a thin corrugated cardboard just with a, a layer of masking tape over the top. Basically what I needed to do was to find a suitable object to be able to lay some fiberglass over to create the light bucket that I needed to be able to sit the new light into it. So, no word of a lie, I was raiding the cupboard for cans of tuna uh, with a ruler, trying to measure the diameter of the cans, baked beans, cat food, um, what else did we try? There was some glass jars um, of jam that I tried. Basically something that provided me with the correct diameter of a suitably sort of robust material that I could use it four times to pop off four moulds. So purely by chance, yeah, on a, on a utility cupboard raid, I found whatever this is. I think it's an old hand cream pot that was just kicking around. We didn't have the lid. So what I did was I made a tapered wooden plug, which fits in the top nice and tightly so that keeps the um, diameter of the cylinder fixed. Stuck a piece of wood on top so I can then drape my fiberglass over it. Now what you can see just over in the corner of the screen there is here's one I made earlier. So this is three layers of chopped strand mat just laid up over the top and then pulled from the pulled from the mold and a very quick uh, sand and, and trim down. Here's one that I've literally just pulled from the mold. So you can see it's pretty rough, but they're turning out just as I need to really. This, this pot is super smooth, so it's given me a really nice uh, finished face to the buckets, you know, that will just a very, very light skimmer filler. I thought about gel coating them, I thought about vacuum bagging them because I do have the ability to do that but it's just making additional work and it's kind of unnecessary. 
So, well, I've not even shown you the lights, and here they are. Um, they are genuine Lucas items that you can still readily buy. There's so many cars that still use these. So, as you can see, I still need to drill a hole through here to allow the lights to sit in there properly. But you won't be able to make it out very well from this poorly shot piece of video. But there is maybe a millimetre around the perimeter of the light before the bucket. So it means they're going to sit in there really, really nicely. So it was, a, it was an absolute stroke of luck, but something that's just panned out well. So I needed to lay up another two light buckets and here you can see me laying up one of those. So just running you through the process, I pre-cut some circular um, discs of the chopped strand mat to which I then cut into to sort to form a, a sort of flower and petal shape if you can imagine that. So when I draped the matting over the um, former, the matting naturally started to drape down the sides. There was no way you'd be able to get it laying nicely without making those cuts because it would just all sort of ruffle and clump up. So by making those cuts, it allows it to drape down the side nice and easily. And you can see me just sort of working around the perimeter of the, of the, of the mould, just getting the fibreglass to lay down really nicely. And yeah, three layers of chop strand mat gave me a real nice, solid uh, bucket. So once I let that dry for a few hours, I then popped it out of the mould, trimmed off the real rough uh, top edge, just to give me a nice regularised shape, and then took it over to the belt sander to then take out any high spots around the around the bucket so i could then get those prepped and ready to fit into the rear clamp new day uh more work progressed so the driver's side light i got uh, the bucket cut out the hole prepped cardboard over the front face then glass from the inside with the same three layers of chop strand mat as the other side now the other side has progressed further let me show you what's going on. So I have got P38 sanded down and the whole area kind of got to a, a nice sort of level. I then cut out two circular templates for the light buckets and started to muck around with the positioning of those. Now I used a couple of reference photos that I found online of other Mark 1s with the twin lights, um, but they all really seem to sort of vary in terms of their setting out. So I've basically positioned these where I think, personally, they look the best. So you can sort of see my uh, tape guidelines and, and how, how I've sort of gone about setting them out. And I've had a day, well, I set them out and then sort of stepped away for the, for the evening, come, came back today and still happy with how they look. So I think this is the fixed position. I did think about using the taper of the outer vent edge to taper in the lights, but I think just keeping it classic, I'm going to go for a vertical stack on the rear lights. So I've got the spacing nice, you know, from the edge of the grill um, recess. The spacing in between the two lights I'm, I'm more than happy with. I think it sort of sits comfortably in, in, the, in the area on the rear clam. So what that now leads me on to do is get the hole saw out. A ridiculous amount of thought went into the depth of these light buckets and how much I wanted the rear lights protruding from the rear clam. What you can see here is what I finally settled on and I don't think what you will be able to make out is that I've got the lights set at a depth where the bevel of the light as it comes out of the bucket the light then bevels round into that conical shape um, to form the rest of the light. I, I didn't want them too far recessed, I didn't want them sticking out too far, so it was that fine balance where I think I've achieved what I want to see visually. Getting the first side set out was nice and easy, I just mucked around with the positions of the uh, templates until I was happy with the look. Um, obviously that now needs to be repeated to the other side, so there's a lot more 
uh, time consuming work just to make sure I've got everything as symmetrical as, as, as I possibly can. Um, so I have gone through the process of, so I made a cardboard template of the first side, showing you that terribly. So that's basically a template locating the light positions um, from the first side. I then transposed that over to the second side and then just using my other cardboard templates just to set out the location of where I need to cut the buckets. From there, I was sort of able to stand back and eye it through, if I'm perfectly honest, taking some check dimensions where I could, but there, there's no corners or square edges to be able to take any millimeter perfect accurate dimensions from. So it really was, you know, check here, check there, stand, stand back, see what I thought until I was happy with how these ones sit, which I am now. So I'll get the hole saw out and uh, buzz the holes in, in this second side. A few inches later. So with the buckets cut down, I was then able to get them positioned in the rear clam after a little bit of fine fettling to the actual uh, size of the openings. So I can show you how they look now. You can see the top light, I actually had to move down five mil. Well, it's four, yeah, four or five mil. And it's not until you sort of get the buckets actually in there properly that you can start to take some decent um, vertical dimensions. So I'm now happy that both sides are symmetrical, both horizontally and vertically, the separation of the uh, lights from each other and everything else of that nature. So what I can now do is fiberglass them in from the backside. Um, before I do that, actually, I will just double check and fit all four lights just to make sure all of the screw holes of, of all four of the lights are nice and horizontal to each other. Because there'd, there'd be nothing worse than having one light bucket slightly cocked, which meant the chrome visible screws on the light lenses um, are not horizontal. A few moments later. Today's just been one of those days where I've just managed to achieve a huge amount. So if you cast your mind back to midway through the video where I was talking about cutting the driver's side um, bucket holes out of the rear clam, that was basically the first task of this morning. Um, so fitting of those buckets, fiberglassing behind all four buckets to get them secured into the clam, then any P38 that was necessary, followed by sand, followed by a couple of trial fits, and then also a couple uh, thin skims of filler, which you know I'll show you the results in a short while. That was also in between fitting my new gas coilovers that I had turned up this week. If you remember, possibly video before last, I mentioned that my current coilovers were maxed out and I was going to send them back to Gaz to have the body shortened, get some new shorter springs fitted. Well, they were turned around in less than a week and they've just been sat on the shelf waiting to be fitted to the car. So I managed to get those on as well. So what I will be able to show you um, after I've finished waffling is the car as it sits at the moment. And I would have thought it's maybe going to come down maybe another 10 mil max but I'm pretty much there in terms of a, of a ride height that I'm happy with um, so it sat back down on its wheels with the new arches new rear tail lights fitted and yeah other, other than looking at a complete patchwork of um, filler old blue color gel coat it's it looks epic it really does and I know my poor videography won't portray um how the car really looks but yeah i think yeah just a just the cheesy grin on my face is is, is showing it's it's sort of show
pretty much wraps this one up, I think. If you have liked what you've seen, then make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss any future episodes that I do release. You can follow me on Instagram, RatchetGT40, so you can keep up to date with the latest photos and build progress that I do post up on there, because that is ahead of these videos. Uh, coming up in the next video, honestly don't know. Um, I can't think what I fancy doing next. I do have some more bodges to fix, unfortunately, but that isn't fun, so I might just get those done and out of the way. Um, I'm working on a couple nice little custom fabricated parts at the moment, so I might share those with you. But yeah, I haven't decided yet, but whatever it is, uh, I'll make sure that I do catch it on video and share it with you. So up until then, I will see you next time.